Southern Arizona. A formidable and inhospitable landscape indeed. A place where the plants have more thorns than leaves. A place of rattlesnakes, giant wasps, tarantulas, stinging ants, scorching heat, and of course, cactus. Not very far away is the border between Arizona and Mexico, a place famous for problems, but 150 years ago, it was also famous for its problems. After the Civil War, all kinds of people were moving west, including lots of people who were trying their hand at ranching out here in Arizona. Thing is, they were running into all kinds of problems out here. Not only do you have the climate and everything to contend with, which does not really lend itself to good ranching, but also all kinds of Indian attacks and everything else. So the United States government sent some soldiers out to a nearby fort. One day, in between keeping an eye on the Mexicans and the cattle rustlers going over the border and the Indians nearby, the soldiers were sitting around talking when a guy named Ed Shefflin said, you know, those mountains over there look pretty interesting for prospecting. I think I'm gonna go check them out. And according to the famous legend, the soldiers looked at him like he was crazy and told him, Ed, the only thing you're gonna find out there is your tombstone. <laughs> We're back in Tombstone, Arizona. The town too tough to die. Once upon a time, this town was very famous all over the world for silver mining. Like the sign says, Tombstone was born a mining town with silver in its veins. Remember that guy I was telling you about, Ed Scheiflin or Shefflin? Well, it turns out instead of his tombstone, he found a whole bunch of silver. But according to legend and Ed himself, he never forgot what those Sour Patch Kids said about him dying out here, and he named his newfound claim Tombstone. Nowadays, Tombstone's wealth comes from the tourists. Family entertainment is the name of the game today. Oh yeah, and there's also this whole thing about gunfighting and the OK Corral, something like that. You know, with the shoot shoot and the bang bang and the uh, cowboy murder. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Tombstone is 100% authentic Wild West. But technically, it is not a ghost town. See, to be a ghost town, everybody has to move away and they have to close down the post office, but that never happened happened to Tombstone? Ever since the mines played out, the tourists have kept this place going strong. And if you know me at all, you know there's nothing I love more than touristy stuff. And there is plenty of it in Tombstone. A veritable bonanza of it. But before I get to any of that, I think I might as well start at the beginning and head down into the mine. I'm a little nervous about going down into a dark, scary mine by myself. Luckily, my friend Oscar and his whole family are in town. You ready to go into mine, Let's bro? Do it. Let's do it. I don't mind at all. This is the site of one of Ed Shefflin's original mines, the Good Enough Mine. Oh. This looks safer than I thought. Oh, I gotta trade in my R for Adventure hat for some safety equipment. Ooh, hello. <laughs> maybe this one. Oh, no, maybe this one. Uh... How do I look? Okay, this entire mine was hand chiseled and blasted with dynamite. Okay. We're learning. Bang a turn. Bang a turn. All right. Okay, time to go down underground. Whoa, this is a big hole, Oscar. I'm stoked, I love Minecraft. That was called the honey cart. Let's put it this way, it's basically a porter potty. Maybe Ooh, try I to like save this. this. what I'm doing, I forget what I'm doing, then I start lying. I'm... Time to go down. Here we go, down, 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 the rabbit hole. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't like these rickety steps. Oh boy. This is like the Calico Mine Ride with no train. Our guide, who used to work at Disneyland, by the way, as Launchpad McQuack was telling us that all these holes, they weren't dug to get to anything. These were all full of silver at one point. Whoa! Watch your head there, Justin. Wow! So they'd be digging and chiseling along. All of a sudden, they across this big open area with all kinds of calcites like that inside. It is 65 degrees down here and dry. Therefore, Oscar doesn't have to watch his head because he's too short. All right, so but I do. Yeah. Silver is extremely rare. I would say easily 95% of all the silver in the world 
has to be processed to make it shiny. All right, mining tour over. I've been to Tombstone probably half a dozen times in my life and never got to go down in any of the mines, so that was pretty cool. Besides having one of the most epic names for a town of all time, there are actually a lot of historic buildings still here in town. There have been several fires in Tombstone, but a lot of the buildings here are still from the 1880s. The miners here in the 1870s and 80s were earning four bucks a day, which was a veritable fortune at the time. And pretty fast this place went from a miner's tent city to a regular city full of saloons and gambling dens and houses of the ladies of the night to help relieve those poor miners of the burden of carrying around all that money. There's a lot of stuff to do here and a lot of interesting history. Now mining is interesting. The old west is interesting. But the thing that brings most people to Tombstone is, of course, the actual, real life, bona fide, honest to goodness, okay corral. Every Western themed anything, theme park, kids birthday party, whatever you want, any Western themed anything has got a sign that says, okay corral. And this here's the real deal, the original, opened by John Montgomery in 1881. All those horses had to be stabled and fed somewhere when they came into town. And just like our new fangled automobiles, they needed places for repair, etc., etc. I've been here a few other times before, but I still have no idea what OK stands for. Probably stands for, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. oh cool. Okay. Oh, oh cool. Cool. Of course, this place wouldn't be famous just for having horses corralled here. It's famous for being the site of the most epic gunfight in Western history. This is where you purchase the tickets to go outside and see the actual spot where Wyatt Earp and his homies got into that epic historical gunfight with the Cowboys. If you're not familiar with the story from history, you might be familiar with it from a little movie. Tombstone. My favorite Western movie Mine too. of all time. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for movies in general, probably nobody would remember Tombstone. Way back in the day, John Ford put out a movie called My Darling Clementine. Based on the book Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal. It told the highly fictionalized version of the story of frontier legend Wyatt Earp. Later, this sweet version of the story came out, gunfight at the OK Corral, and made this place, the OK Corral itself, world famous as the site of the famous gunfight. And now I am about to see it. Wow, here it is, the OK Corral. As you can see, this is mostly a place for taking care of your wagons and stabling your horses. And despite the name of the famous gunfight being the gunfight at the OK Corral, the gunfight actually didn't take place here. The gunfight itself actually took place out the rear entrance of the OK Corral. The classic bad guys in the story, the Cowboys, had been threatening Wyatt Earp and his brother Virgil, who was the town marshal, and by extension their brother Morgan and their friend Doc Holliday. So they left their horses behind at the OK Corral and exited out the back to go find Doc. You see, these bad guys, who are known as the Cowboys, which was actually like kind of an offensive term for for like a looter, a rustler, like kind of a bad dude. Had major beef with the Earps. The story can actually get super complicated and Western historians still argue over exactly what was going on to this day. The simple version of the story is that the cowboys were outlaws and the Earps were lawmen. But they also had some personal beef, like gambling beef, I don't like your face beef, and of course, let's not forget to mention that the cowboys were mostly Democrats and the Earps or more Republicans. It's basically the wild rustlers, the old west guys versus the townies. The Earps represented the town interest. The cowboys wanted things to stay the way they were back in the old west. All of a sudden the beef came to a head and they all commenced to shooting. I got him. Ooh, they're fighting, they're shooting. They stopped. On the cowboy side, Ike Clanton, his brother Billy, and two brothers, Frank and Tom McClowry. On the Earp side, you had Wyatt Earp, Virgil Earp, Morgan Earp and their tuberculosis afflicted friend Doc Holliday. I'm your Huckleberry. Ike Clinton, who pretty much started all the trouble by getting drunk the night before and causing a bunch of mayhem and running his mouth about how he's gonna kill the Earps, didn't actually have a gun, so nobody shot him and during the fight he kind of ran off. But his brother Billy Clinton and the brothers Frank and Tom McClary lay dead here at the hands of of the Earps. In theory, the Earps and their friend Doc Holliday just came here to disarm the cowboys because there were rules against carrying guns into town. And all the early movies and books portray the Earps as the good guys and these guys, the cowboys, as the bad guys. But the argument comes because sure, Virgil Earp has the legal right 
to come and disarm these guys, but they also had a lot of bad blood between them. So even though at first the town was all stoked that those bad cowboys were dead, and a judge later acquitted the Earps of any wrongdoing, more and more of the democratic element in town and the ranchers outside of town felt that it was murder in the streets of Tombstone. And this is the actual spot where it happened. C.S. Fly had a photo studio right there. Way back over there is the OK Corral itself, and all of this was a big vacant lot. So you can see why they call it the gunfight at the OK Corral, because the gunfight in the vacant lot really near to the OK Corral just doesn't have the same ring to yeah, it. It's not yeah. snappy. Mm -mm. They used to have these concrete statues out here that look like something from Knott's Berry Farm, where they put all the statues supposedly in the exact spots where the, uh, the fighting went down. Now they have these much more sophisticated animatronics out here telling the story. Doc Holliday was actually staying in a little boarding house at the back of Fly's photo studio, which I think is why the Clantons came this direction in the first place. These buildings are reproductions, and actually this whole thing is now a tourist trap for sure. But as you can see on this map drawn by Wyatt Earp, this is the actual site of the gunfight. When you actually stop and think about it, men lost their lives right here. Sure, it's the birthplace of the most famous legends in Western history and definitely the most famous gunfight in Western history, but still, dudes died right here. Throughout the 1880s and 90s, there was a lot of mining here, but eventually the pumps that sucked the water out of the mines to keep them from being flooded caught on fire, burned down, and mining stopped in this town. But the citizens of Tombstone were not gonna let their town go down that easily. Instead, they decided to cash in on their violent past and create Tombstone, the town too tough to die, tourist attraction. And even now, just a few feet from where those guys actually died, they perform daily gunfight reenactments. You're called us horse thieves in state. We are horse thieves. <laughs> Shut up, Bill. Nobody likes you, Bill. <laughs> Uh-oh. You mean right? The herbs are coming. Uh-oh. Here comes trouble. Here for your guns! Hold! I don't want that! Shoot up! What happened, Jude? They shoot them. They killed. Everybody! That was awesome! That was roughly the same amount of time that the real gunfight took. Some of his brothers got wounded, but Wyatt Earp came through the gunfight at the OK Corral without a scratch. Not only that, but he outlived all of his brothers, so he sort of became the hero of the show. Everybody always talks about what a great marksman that Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp were. Pfft, big deal, I could do that. <laughs> it is weird that men died right here, and right next to it, you can try your hand at the fun shooting gallery. You want to grow up to kill some cowboys? Get your practice at Prescott Pete's Highfalutin Shooting Gallery. It does make for a pretty fun pick. You know what else makes a super fun pick, Oscar? What? You can lay down right where people died. You can lay on the actual spot of death. Look at me. I'm laying down where someone died. Which is much less fun and much less sensitive than I thought it would be. I'm a jerk now, Oscar. I'm a jerk. The sun's getting low in the sky. Gotta check out C.S. Fly's photography gallery. C.S. Fly was most famous for photographing Geronimo. As a matter of fact, he took a lot of photographs of Apaches. But he also took a lot of photographs of Tombstone. And some of its notorious characters, including good old Ed Shepard himself. Ooh, and there's Ike Clanton right there. I don't know who this is, but that does not look like a fun pick. C.S. Fly is also famous for boarding Doc Holliday and his girlfriend at his studio. They think that's why the Clantons and the McLowrys were over here in the first place, they were waiting to get the jump on Doc. But as we saw, it didn't work out that way. So anyway, you have the original OK Corral still in the same spot. You've got the authentic site of the OK Corral gunfight complete with um, somewhat animatronic mannequins. Who, by the way, have some really weird choices in footwear. There's a snake in my boot. Then you got Prescott Peach Shooting Gallery. The theater for the gunfight reenactments. There's a lot of stuff in one little spot. Aw, oh, sick. There's an area where you can practice lassoing. Get him, Jude! Oh, close! Oh, closer! Lasso me, Jude. Lasso me. Come on, throw it on me. 
Throw it at me. Oh! Oh, he's got me! He's got me! Save me, Oscar! Help! Show me how you get the cow, dude. You don't need a rope. Show me how you get the cow. Oh, dang. Hey, Jude, how old are you? Four! Four! And he can already beat up cows! Oh, check out all the fun pick opportunities like this wagon or. Even better! Come on, short round! Let's go! Ah! Get it? Indiana Jones fun pick. He doesn't get it yet. That's okay. Okay. Oh, this is fun. This right here is a little display of uh, what a certain type of lady's working quarters would have been like. Oh, there's some 1880s lovelies right here. <laughs> Those are working gals, Oscar. Ooh. Working for their money. What uh, do they do? Uh, well, they, they help the miners yeah. with their various needs. Cool. Some quality family entertainment in there. Ooh, look it. An 1880s toilet. That's my favorite kind of toilet. Oh, sorry. Someone's in there. Let's not forget back in the OK Corral itself, they do have quite a lot of historical stuff. They got this kind of wagon. That kind of wagon, uh, a different kind of wagon. There's one there. There's another one over there. Oh, and then of course there's these. I think the uh, horses uh, hung out in here. The technical term, I believe, was a horse house. Oh, and then right here we have a cowboy bathtub. How about that? An authentic cowboy bathtub. Yep. Nothing weird about that. Sure is a lot of stuff to look at, but compared to that gunfight, it's just okay. Get it? Like okay, corral. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? Oh, I was wrong. This isn't a wagon. This is a buggy. I would take a fun pick in that, but it already bugs me too much. Oh, how about this? Before you go back inside... You can pan for... Oh, gemstones. Wait a minute here. Gemstones? I thought we was gonna get to pan for gold! Oh, well. Gemstones are cool, I guess. If you like saxophones. What are you doing, Oscar? Take a ride. What are you... Is that mechanical? Did you put a quarter in that or something? No, that's just... That's all me. Oh, you're just pretending? Fine! All right, show us how a real cowboy rides, Oscar. How a real cowboy rides. I don't, I still somehow don't think that's it. So that's one fun pick opportunity, and then over here is another. It's the fun caskets of Billy Clinton and the McClowry brothers. I heard they were gonna put some fake dead bodies in here, but people would have been like, oh brother. It's kind of crazy, man, because as fun as this is, people actually died here. People actually died. It's a little morbid. Right over there. See, when America was tough, we turned places where people died into tourist attractions mm -hmm. and turned it into some good, made some money. Ooh, and last but not least, we got the marshal's office. Look at this handsome chap. What are you in for, cowboy? I was chewing gum, and I spit it out right there on the sidewalk. Oh, hardcore criminal in there. Watch out, Oscar. Watch out! He's gonna spit on me. Well, okay, I guess that's it for the corral. Check this out, though. More wagons! But also, more historical displays of what life was like way back in the before times. Ooh, chaps! Dang, they got a cowboy saddle here. Dude, check out this old hearse, Oscar. This is how they used to take the dead bodies to the cemetery. They put them in there. Check it out, dude. The guys that were killed in the OK Corral gunfight. They were in coffins with glass windows and then they were probably put in a glass hearse like this people really liked looking at dead bodies in the 1880s <laughs> like like a lot yeah too much check this out they got a whole bunch of saddles in here <gasps> look at Wyatt Earp saddle from Tombstone. Okay, yeah, speaking of the whole Tombstone thing, my favorite version of Tombstone on film is from the 1993 movie Tombstone. Mostly because of Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday, but also Kurt Russell as Wyatt Earp. And this is his saddle from the movie. Think about it, dude. Wyatt Earp, AKA Kurt Russell's butt, was right on that saddle. <laughs> Russell butt. I've actually been looking for Tombstone on Blu-ray forever. And finally, coming to Tombstone and to the OK Corral. I think I've come to the right place. Cause here it is. Let's check it out, dude, look at, see, look what I say. Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer are terrific. Wait a minute, what about Sam Elliott? Bill Paxton, all the other People. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton, Stephen Lang. There's a lot of other amazing people in there. Come on, add more to the cover. You got room. Look at this. How weird is this? Look at that hat. The R stands for adventure. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Fun, Fun pick. pick. 
That was awesome. I got ambushed at the OK Corral by some fun pick seekers. Dang, the festivities end really early in Tombstone. When you buy your ticket to watch the gunfight, you also get a ticket over to the Tombstone Epitaph. Get a free newspaper. Hopefully I can make it through this crazy traffic and get over there in time. Oh, and by the way, the herbs may have won the gunfight at the OK Corral, but not everything turned out perfect for them afterwards. Virgil Earp was ambushed while he was walking across the street over here and blasted with shotguns. He lived, but one of his arms was maimed and crippled for life. Wyatt's other brother Morgan was assassinated, shot in the back while he was playing pool right here. The Cowboys finally caught up to him. His body was shipped out to Colton, California, not far from Riverside, San Bernardino. And his murder eventually set Wyatt Earp off on a crazy vendetta ride, killing all of his enemies, getting revenge, or getting justice? Things didn't end too well for Doc Holliday either. All that drinking and gambling and smoking caught up to him and he died of his tuberculosis alone and friendless in a sanitarium in Colorado. Wyatt Earp, who some people looked at as a hero, but others looked at as a stone cold murderer. Outlived them all. Actually, most of the people that were on the Earp side left town, including John Clum, the proprietor of the Tombstone Epitaph, the local paper. This is the paper that had the Earps back, and once they left and it was bought by somebody else, as soon as the Earps were gone, pretty much, as soon as their backs were turned, everyone in town was like, they were murderers. Wyatt Earp spent much of his life roaming around looking for a new tombstone never finding it. But by the end of his life, he was living in LA and movies were a thing and he kept hoping that one of his friends, William S. Hart, maybe Tom Mix, some of those early cowboy movie stars, would turn his life into a movie and sort of save him from a bad reputation. Wyatt Earp passed away long before his story was turned into a movie, but I'd like to think he would like the legend that's been built up around him ever since. And now it's time for me to collect my free newspaper. Oh, what you doing in here, Oscar? Watching a movie. Watching a movie? Weird. They have the original presses that they printed the Epitaph newspaper on. Wow, they also have a lot of other machines in here. I took a printing class in college, so I actually had to operate a printing press kind of like that one. We had to learn all about ink and typing and linotype and stereotypes. Offset lithography, fun. Anyway, sadly, this will be our last stop for today. Like many other tourist towns, Tombstone shuts down pretty early, especially when it's not a weekend. But we'll be back in Tombstone very soon. I almost forgot to pick up my free newspaper. Oh, thank you. Look at this, Oscar. The Tombstone Epitaph. Talks all about the cowboy murder. I like the movie better. Well, there's a lot more to see. But for now, at least, you've done your duty. You can go home and sleep well. You've been wanting to say that for a long time, haven't yes, you? I have. You wanted to say that forever, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And you finally had your turn. Goodbye, Feels Oscar. Good. Goodbye. You've done your duty. Is that a fact? For a chicken that don't go healed, you run your mouth kind of reckless. Well, I'm real scared. He chickened out.